Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, 87 full four. So today, guys, we're talking about guys my World Cup qualifier predictions for Condable, guys. So let, let me know your predictions, comments below, guys. Remember, guys, so hit that like button, guys. I want to see us reach at least 25 likes on this video. So please remember to hit that like button. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you're new on here, guys, as we're trying to reach 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So let me go ahead and make some two announcements in regards to this video real quick before we even get started. My first announcement is that this will be a follow-up video to the World Cup Qualify predictions I did in December. Remember, guys, when I made those predictions, it was right after the World Cup. A lot of things have changed since then, so some of my predictions on that video may change in this video. Most of the predictions, though, from that video should stay the same as this video, so please be aware of that. Second of all, um, well, actually, now let's discuss about the format. So the format for the World Cup Qualifiers is simple. Condable is pretty much kept the same as usual. Instead of this time, though, instead of the top four directly qualifying, it's a top six directly qualifying. And seventh place goes to the Inter-Confederation Playoffs. Okay? We're going to go ahead and go from chronological order from bottom to first. So coming in tenth place, guys, I have is Bolivia. We, we know Bolivia is just not really good enough to qualify. We know this nation is just doesn't have the... Um, the players, the quality to compete. And even though they're very good at home, La Paz is a very formidable stadium. They're amazing at that home with the altitude and everything. They're just not good enough. And even though Bolivia has done a fantastic Copa Libertadores, have reached the quarterfinals, you know, the furthest they have made since I think the 13 and 14 season, I still don't think it's going to be enough, of course. And I just feel like for me, Bolivia, they're just not good on the road. And that's going to ultimately cost them at the end of the day is that their away form is not good enough to compete. And if you just can't pick up points on the road, you're not going to qualify. It's simple as that. Players to look out for for Bolivia, though, is Martins, their top goal scorer. He was a top goal scorer in the Condable World Cup Qualifiers last edition, so look out for him. And then, obviously, I would also keep an eye upon on Vaca. He is a good young player to look out for for Bolivia. Coming to ninth place, I have it is Peru. Now, this might be a very controversial take, and I might get a lot of abuse in the comments below. Hear me out, though. I feel like for me with Peru, they're just regressing. I think Gareca's departure has made the national team worse. And I feel like he's the reason why this national team was at that level. Because we saw how he did in the 2018 World Cup. You know, reaching the World Cup and obviously making, getting Peru to the World Cup, uh, World Cup, sorry, Copa America final. You know, and I just feel like with key players being so, um, with players being very late in age, you know, towards the end of their career, the likes of um, Guerrero, Laputa, and Gais. I just don't think they're good enough to compete. And I just like for me with Peru, my biggest issue with them is that their defense and midfield is solid. Their attack isn't good enough. And that's what worries me with the most with this Peru team is that where are the goals going to come from? So hence the reason why I have them in ninth place. Very, very controversial pick. I'm, I, you know, I know it's a very unpopular pick, but, um, you know, that's the, that's the thing I like about predictions. You know, there's going to always be a surprise. And I feel like Peru will be a surprise, will surprise people in the wrong way. Um, I will say this though. There is a player to look out for and the name is Laura, I would look out for him. He's a great player to look out for, young player to look out for for that team. The next up, in eighth place, I have it is Paraguay. Paraguay, for me, is a national team that a lot of people have been hyping up. And I feel like, for me, this Paraguay national team, yes, they look good on paper. They are defensively very solid, um, and they are great. My issue, though, is I kind of what I said for Peru is that uh, where are the goals coming from? Because, for me, Al Marion is not really a reliable goal scorer. Yes, he's been performing well for Newcastle and everything. He's just not so consistent. And in CISO, as good as he is, he hasn't scored for the national team yet as of thus, as of, as of today. And I just feel like for me, the problem with um, Paraguay is I feel like they're relying too, too relying on individual players to bail them out. And that's my issue is that I don't think they're really great that as a collective. And yes, while they can pick up points against Argentina, are they going to pick up points against nations around their caliber, like the likes of Chile, Peru, and Venezuela, Bolivia? And what I mean by pick up points is like you got to pick up four points at least, you know, because like I said, it's all good and all picking up two points against Argentina. But if you're not picking up points against like Peru and, you know, Chile, then you're in big trouble. Because like I said, those kind of nations are going to effectively battle for you for that spot to qualify. So, yeah, I just don't think Paraguay is going to do it. Uh, even though they're defensively solid, I don't think they have enough goals in them. Then eighth place, I'm sorry, seventh place I have it is Chile. I think Chile will finally qualify be back of the world cup after missing out in the last two editions 2018 2022 and i just feel like for me with chile man it's about time they perform you know i'm looking at players like claudio bravo you know alexis sanchez pulgar vidal we don't know how much they have more in their tanks to you know have this chile team help this chile team out and there are some players though to look out for Burrington diaz 
Barrington was amazing in the Copa America in 2021, I believe. He was fantastic in that edition. And then, obviously, I would also look at Pizarro. Pizarro is a great young player from Colo Colo. He is a player to look out for that can help Chile with their forward, um, their goal scoring, which is something I feel like they struggle with. And so I feel like for um, Chile, once again, guys, I think they're going to qualify just about, though, in seventh place. And the sixth place I have is Venezuela. I think Venezuela, you have to do it. This edition. Like, this World Cup has been expanded. And fun fact for you guys, Venezuela is the only nation in Condable that has never qualified for the World Cup. Every other nation has qualified. <laughs> you know, and with players like Rondon, Joseph Martinez, Dara Machis, they have enough quality on paper. It's just up for them to decide to compete or not. And even though the federation is a mess, and even though baseball is the number one kind of sport there in the country, I think they have what it takes to compete. And obviously, Farnes is a very good young keeper. And I just feel like for Venezuela, man, they're going to finally figure things out and finally qualify to the World Cup. Then in fifth place, I have is Colombia. Colombia, for me, is a national team that's also, that also disappointed in the last World Cup qualifying cycle. They really honestly should have got that playoff spot ahead of Peru. And they just couldn't finish. So they had a, a consecutive games where they were unable to score. They had so many games, nil-nil, nil-nil. And obviously, if you can't score, you're not going to get the points, you know. And they didn't pick up enough points. And, you know, players like Radamel Falcao disappointed. Players like Zapata disappointed. Muriel disappointed. And that's now up for the youngsters to turn up, like the likes of Luis Diaz, Sinistera. And I think for Colombia, they have to start bringing in the young players. Because for me, the players like Ospina... Hamas Rodriguez are simply past it. They're prime. They, they shouldn't play anymore for the national team, if I'm being completely honest with you guys. They're finished, in my opinion. You know? And I just think for Colombia, man, just bring in some more youngsters. Get that striker situation solved because you have to have a clinical number nine. Because for me, if you don't have a clinical number nine, it's going to be hard for you to score goals. We know how important the number nine position is, striker's position in general. Who is it going to be? Is it going to be that Bore guy at Frankfurt who had was great the first season, helped Frankfurt win the Europa League, and then the second season... He was disastrous, of course. So maybe if he maybe he can have a revitalite, maybe he can revive his career with the World Cup qualifiers, and maybe um, you know perform well for both club and country. And the fourth place I have is Uruguay, and even though Uruguay for me they disappointed a lot in the 2022, I think they'll still do good. And I just feel like for me with Uruguay they have some great young players. You know the likes of Uruguay, Pelestri, Darn Nunes, Ronaldo Rajo, Ben Tacor, Valverde. You know the, the the midfield looks amazing. You know you have Valverde. You know, Bentacor and Uguate. That's a great midfield. My only concern with Uruguay is their attack. Their attack is my biggest concern with them because we all saw in the World Cup 2022 how lackluster they were and how they were only able to score two goals. And those two goals came from Derescata, who is a great player from Flamengo. You know, and the likes of Jorn Nunez, Luis Suarez, and Cavani disappointed. So it's can Uruguay get their scoring back? Because that's going to be very important for Uruguay is that they can they get the scoring back. And the third place I have is Ecuador. I feel like Ecuador for me was one of the best nations in the World Cup qualifiers and they performed magnificently well in the 2020 World Cup. Despite the fact they went out in the group stage, they put up some great performances, especially against the Dutch and against Qatar. And they were just really unlucky against Senegal. You know, Senegal uh, showed up on the day. And I just feel like for players like for Ecuador, you know, obviously uh, Moises Caicedo is one player to look out for, Gonzalo Plata as well, you know, Kendra Paez as well, young player that Chelsea signed, you know, then you have players like Enor Valencia Galindez that's showing up, I just think for Ecuador, the issue, the thing is, can they get the score, can they not rely on Enor Valencia, because that's my big issue with this country, is that I feel like they're very reliant on Enor Valencia, although I do have one thing to say about Ecuador, guys, that they are on minus three points, because of the fact that they falsified the documents for one of the, they feel the ineligible player for the World Cup qualifiers, they were handed a minus three points, deduction so that may possibly cost them to qualify for the world cup although i don't think they should i don't think it's going to cost them i feel like this team is so good that even with the minus three point deduction i feel like this team shouldn't have any problems with qualifying for the world cup and then obviously we have the top two and the second place i have is brazil brazil for me are going through a transition phase i feel like a lot of the players like the old players like Neymar, diego silva marquinhos um are gonna move on we're not gonna see these players be as prominent and the youngsters like victor roque anthony and then obviously, um, um, Rafinha, well, not Rafinha, but, um, <laughs> and then you obviously have Danilo as well. And I just feel like for Brazil, man, we're going to, how are these youngsters going to perform? And it's going to be interesting how they do with their two different coaches, because they're going to have their film and insight coach until the Copa America. And then after Copa America, they have Carlo Ancelotti. So, you know, we've heard a lot of good credit, uh, good reports, what Fluminense has done. They play some fantastic football and let's see if it can, tr um, take place for the national team. So. For Brazil, man, I think they're going to qualify. I don't think they'll do as com comfortably as they did in the previous times because of the fact I feel like they're going through a transition. 
And then first place I have is Argentina. Argentina for me are World Cup champions. Of course, they're going to qualify with ease. You know, the likes of Lionel Messi is amazing, of course. And then you have Emmy Martinez, who was excellent in 2020 World Cup. And then you have Di Maria Otamendi, who was fantastic. Then you obviously have um, Enzo Fernandez, Rodrigo de Paul. The list goes on and on. This team is stacked. Some players to look out for. Some young players, though. I will keep an eye upon Thiago Almeida. Of course, he won the World Cup as well. And then, obviously, Luca Romero. You know, Milan got him a free this summer, I believe. So, fantastic sign there. And then, Barco. He's one of the best um, Argentina left-backs. You know, I think he made the move to Porto. I think he's going to make that move very soon. Or actually, not Porto. Brighton. I think Brighton's going to sign him. And that's a fantastic left-back, you know. And so, I think for um, Argentina, man, they're looking great. So, to recap my predictions, guys. These are predictions I have right here. So, let me go ahead and minimize my webcam right here, guys. And so, these are the predictions I have right here, guys. So, um... Hope you guys did enjoy. So remember, guys, if you made it all the way forward to the end of this video, guys, please let me know your predictions as well. And if you make it to the end of this video, guys, say in the comments below, um, uh, milk. <laughs> I know it's really random, but if you made it end the far end of the video, you will know why. So if you come, if you make it this far, please comment milk. Remember, guys, to like and subscribe. Comment below your thoughts. Comment subscribe below if you're watching. Comment comment up below. Also, also become a member of the channel to get access to members' videos, and members' streams, and let me know what you guys think of my predictions, guys. Was it good predictions, bad predictions, remember, guys? Um, there were some controversial picks I made in this video, and remember, guys, this is just my opinion, so please be aware of that. And also, one last thing, please let me know if I missed any major talking points with any of the 10 countries. I hope you guys did enjoy, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.